Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for waiting. We would now like to begin the Rakuten Technology Conference 2015. The first session is titled, Will AI Surpass Human Intelligence Beyond Deep Learning? Now, please welcome Project Associate Professor at the University of Tokyo, Mr. Yutaka Matsuo. Okay, um, let, me, let me begin my talk. Uh, Will AI surpass human intelligence? Uh, I, I'll be talking about uh, deep learning, uh, which is uh, quite popular uh, recently, and uh, some uh, future uh, direction of deep learning. Okay, um, uh, this is, uh, let me uh, introduce myself. Uh, I, had, I have been working on uh, artificial intelligence for uh, uh, almost uh, 20 years. Uh, these years I, I, I've been working on web mining and also uh, uh, big data analysis. And, uh, I was serving as a, a editorial chief, uh, um, editor-in-chief uh, at the uh, Japan Society of Artificial Intelligence for two years. And after that, uh, now I'm serving <coughs> as the chief of the LC committee in, in JSAI, which is uh, uh, where we discuss about uh, some uh, ethical issue of artificial intelligence uh, applied to the society. Okay, um, deep learning. Um, I think that the, the deep learning is uh, major breakthrough of AI during uh, this half century. And uh, I talk uh, about why this is so. Uh, the, representat uh, the representation is uh, learned automatically from data. Okay, um, uh, now um, AI is booming, so we hear the keyword A AI everywhere everywhere, every day, at uh, many medias, uh, TVs, newspapers. But this uh, boom is the third one. Um, actually, the AI, the area of AI uh, began in uh, 1956. Uh, in that year, uh, the term artificial intelligence is coined at uh, Dartmouth Conference. And that is shortly after the first uh, computer ENIAC was uh, developed in 1946. And uh, in this AI area, we, we had uh, booms and also the winter times. After the first uh, boom, uh, uh, in which the search and inference uh, was, was uh, extensively studied. We have a uh, winter period uh, because the, uh, the such technology, uh, such an inference cannot be applied to many uh, real uh, problems. So that's why we, we have a second AI boom. Um, um, in that period, we, we have many uh, AI systems uh, that uses uh, uh, knowledge, uh, um, you know, knowledge expression and uh, knowledge processing, like expert system, and we have uh, uh, systems like medical diagnosis and uh, identification of uh, organic compounds. Uh, in Japan, we have a, a very big project called a fifth generation computer project. Uh, the Japanese METI government uh, put uh, about uh, 50 billion yen uh, for uh, 10 years, 10 years project. So that was uh, huge. But after that, we uh, again have had uh, winter time uh, because the uh, knowledge um, representation uh, and the inference systems uh, did not work. Uh, so well, and it, it, it was very difficult for us to manage a large amount of knowledge. Uh, knowledge. 
So um, we had winter years again. And, and then now we have a third AI boom uh, because we have uh, lots of uh, web data and big data and machine learning uh, algorithm it can be used for the uh, big data. Uh, so lots of uh, machine learning al algorithms and also deep learning technologies uh, are developed recently. Okay. Um, we hear many keywords related to uh, uh, astronaut intelligence like Pepper, Siri, uh, Shogi, Denno-sen, self-driving car, uh, and, and so on. But uh, looking at this um, uh, figure, we, we can find out that uh, uh, each technology is uh, developed uh, over many years, and uh, they, they are, the technologies are uh, improving uh, little by little. So for example, uh, the Watson, IBM Watson is a very famous. Uh, it, it beats the quiz champion, a TV show uh, in United States. And IBM is applying that technology to uh, uh, many other domains like uh, medical domains or the uh, call, call center applications in, in a, a Japanese uh, mega bank. But uh, uh, we know that the application of uh, knowledge-based systems is uh, you know, widely conducted uh, in the past. Uh, we have uh, mice in Stanford in, in, in early 1970s. And the mice is a very famous uh, AI system uh, for uh, medical diagnosis. And uh, it has uh, uh, more than uh, 500 rules to uh, judge the, the medical disease, uh, 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 the blood, blood disease. And the system was uh, better than a human you know, uh, doctor, uh, not expert human doctor uh, at that time. So, uh, in other words, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, the artificial intelligence better than human for medical domain uh, as early as in uh, 1970s. But since then, the um, technology was uh, developing uh, little by little, and Watson is actually uh, acquiring knowledge from uh, many uh, data sources like uh, Wikipedia and uh, uh, scientific papers and uh, many other uh, data sources. And uh, <coughs> um, in Shogi project, uh, the uh, AI uh, beats human champion, uh, no, no, uh, not uh, human professionals uh, in these uh, three years. And, uh, uh, but uh, the chess AI already uh, be, uh, beat uh, human champion in 1997, and in Ocelo, uh, that, that happens uh, before, you know, before that. So uh, the, the thing is that AI is uh, getting uh, stronger in games, and uh, because the, the chess is uh, more difficult than Ocelo, and Shogi is more difficult than chess. The AI is beating, uh, you know, uh, the more difficult uh, game champions. So the uh, the focus of the game uh, uh, research uh, targets uh, go uh, in maybe next five years, ten years. And uh, I had uh, some news that the uh, Facebook AI research research uh, researcher are doing uh, deep learning analysis, uh, deep learning technology to um, play Go. Uh, because uh, in Go, uh, we have to uh, recognize the, uh, the situation uh, by like, like uh, uh, image processing. So, okay. Uh, but uh, but uh, the deep learning technology is 
different. I think uh, many AI technologies, other than deep learning, are improving little by little. But uh, deep learning technology is uh, developing quite rapidly in these uh, three years, four years. And we have many uh, surprising uh, results uh, from the deep learning community. Um, in Shogi program uh, that beats uh, human champion, uh, human professionals, uh, we use uh, machine learning. And machine learning is uh, illustrated as this. We have uh, some features to represent the situation and uh, some uh, correct move uh, for each uh, situation. And these data are obtained uh, from the huge uh, data of past games. Uh, but uh, the current uh, AI system that beats uh, human professionals use as many as several million uh, features. So the combination of uh, three no, um, uh, three, uh, okay, the, the, the combination of the, the positions uh, consists of uh, each features. And uh, that's why uh, we have many, uh, more than uh, several million uh, features. But, um, uh, but the thing is the uh, we, researchers has to uh, invent uh, good, future, good features uh, to get uh, good uh, performance in machine learning. So if we can get uh, good features, the uh, uh, classification and pr precision will be higher, but otherwise we don't have uh, you know, a good result for machine learning. So the machine learning research is something like um, coming up good features for the target domain. So um, this is the, this corresponds to the uh, hard, pro hard problem one here. Uh, so the, uh, in machine learning, we have to do a feature engineering and that was very difficult for uh, a difficult task, and human should do this. And we have many other hard problems, like frame problems, symbol grounding problems, that were uh, discussed for many years in AI uh, area. But uh, looking at this, we, we found we think uh, we have many, many problems, hard problems, but I think the, the uh, most difficult problem is only one. Uh, that is, in past AI systems, a human must extract features by observing a phenomena and then build model to simulate the phenomena. So that's, uh, in, in other words, uh, the human has to do a very important work for the, at the very first stage of problem solving. And we have to have features, we have to have uh, some variables, and then we, we model based on the variables or, or features. And after that, the computers can work on the model and everything can be automated. But, but the very first stage, of problem solving, that is to uh, get features or variables. Uh, th that phase is only conducted by human. That's the problem. And deep learning is partially doing the task to model, uh, to make model from uh, the phenomena Deep learning can extract uh, features 
uh, for uh, especially in image recognition. So that's why I think deep learning is a major breakthrough of AI in this half century, because uh, the conventional AI systems works given model, uh, and the model was built by humans. But deep learning is uh, partially doing uh, the uh, stage, the uh, first stage of uh, modeling. Okay, um, there are many, many uh, different uh, implementations or methods in deep learning, but I think the autoencoder is the most elegant one, so I will explain a little bit about this. Autoencoder is an important component of deep learning, and uh, uh, the, the regular uh, neural network will we do this given the image, like uh, we can see three in here. Given this image, the, the each pixel of image is input into the input layer, and then we give the correct la level, like three, and this neural network will learn this, and we will give uh, other image, like two or one, four, five, many images, and then correct levels. And then this uh, neural network work will learn uh, the, the image, the, the correspondence of image and the uh, correct level. But the autoencoder is, we will do different thing. Uh, the image is given to the neural network, but at the same time, this image is also given uh, to the neural net network as the correct level. So the, the, this neural network will predict image using the same image. So th that is almost an, a nonsense, but uh, it is not nonsense because the number of uh, neurons in hidden layer is small. Um, the information given in the input layer uh, will go through this uh, small region. And then, um, the information should be, you know, uh, reconstructed. Uh, so, um, the hidden layer will do some kind of compression, and they will do the, a kind of feature extraction. Uh, this is an example. Uh, if we uh, give this image, uh, the number of images to this uh, autoencoder, uh, to the input layer, and also the, uh, as a collect level, then uh, we have uh, this uh, middle layer uh, neurons that each uh, image represents uh, uh, each uh, middle layer uh, uh, neurons. And we can find that this, for example, this image is uh, extracting features, uh, whether the, uh, the, there is a point in the upper region, or for example, this one uh, is uh, extracting features uh, which represent uh, whether the, the, there is a you know, line uh, in the light uh, lower f uh, field. Uh, deep learning is uh, very interesting because uh, this feature extraction is conducted uh, layer-wise. So we have to make, we can make it deep uh, given this, uh, the three layered uh, neural network. Uh, we transform this as, uh, as this. So the input, uh, the information uh, is input to the input layer and then go up to the middle layer and then go down to the output layer. And, and then we you know, put the second uh, neural ne network here and then uh, we put third neural network here. 
So the input is mapped into the uh, middle layer neurons, and that information is input to the second layer, uh, uh, the second you know, uh, neural network. So um, based on the uh, extracted uh, features, uh, the next autoencoder will apply, and then we get more complex uh, middle layer uh, neurons. Okay, this is very uh, a famous work by Google. Uh, given the image uh, obtained from uh, YouTube, uh, th this neural network uh, will extract uh, simple uh, features as a uh, lower layer uh, and uh, more complex features like uh, face node or cat node uh, in the uh, higher layer. So this is uh, conducted uh, by the uh, unsupervised way. So uh, we don't have to give any uh, level for cat or face or human, but the system uh, automatically extract uh, this high, higher order uh, features uh, from uh, many images. And uh, it, it uh, closely resembles a human visual uh, area uh, cortex. Okay. And in uh, 2012, uh, we had uh, a you know, uh, very large improvement for image recognition. Uh, at the uh, large-scale visual recognition challenge. Uh, at that time, uh, our, uh, the technology level was um, uh, like this. Uh, image recognition uh, error ratio is something uh, around 25% or 26%. But uh, in this year, we uh, um, the deep learning team uh, achieved uh, the error rate uh, 60, 60%. So that was uh, quite uh, great. And uh, we, we, uh, we see the huge jump on the uh, image recognition performance. And since then, um, the image recognition performance is improved very rapidly. In 2013, the error rate was decreased to 11%. In 2014, the error rate was 6.7%. Uh, and uh, the baseline of human, which means that if human do this the, the same task, the error rate is 5.1%. Uh, but uh, the, the February in this year, uh, Microsoft achieved as low as 4.9%, and Google uh, achieved 4.8% uh, in March this year. So um, in image recognition task, uh, we can say that the, the computers surpassed human uh, in uh, February two, uh, 2015, and no one uh, imagine this only several years ago. So uh, what is, is it like to surface a human, uh, human in image recognition? This is an uh, uh, example uh, research done by Google. Uh, it, it's called uh, FaceNet. Uh, it, it uses uh, 200 million face uh, pictures of uh, 8 million people, uh, and uh, they use uh, 23, uh, 22, layer neural, uh, neural networks. And the precision uh, was as high as 99.63%. So uh, they are almost uh, perfect. And this is the example of uh, the uh, misclassified error. So this is the face recognition uh, task. So given two images, the task is to uh, judge whether two people is same or not. And this is the error case where the different 
persons uh, recognized as uh, the same person. So uh, actually these two uh, uh, persons are different people, but the uh, neural network judge uh, this as a same person. And this is also the same. But uh, we, we can see that these two people are very similar. It is very hard to recognize even for us human. And this is the, the second error case. Uh, the same, same person are recognized as different persons. Uh, for example, these two pictures uh, is, you know, in these two pictures we, we have uh, the same person, but uh, the computer uh, misclassified because uh, the referee is in the picture here. But looking at these um, uh, two pictures, uh, these are the same persons, but um, you know, many, um, but uh, you know, different look. And this is also the same. Maybe he, he, uh, she's an actor and she's acting uh, some role. And, uh, uh, also, the, the she, she's uh, actress, and uh, the shape of uh, shape of nose is different in these two pictures because um, you know she's wearing some uh, fake fake nose here. So um, we would say that uh, if someone is wearing a fake nose, it is correct to classify as a different person. Uh, using this technology, we can cluster a facial image almost perfectly, even if the people uh, uh, captured in different angle, and they, they uh, even they express different, uh, you know, um, emotion, or even whether they are wearing hat or sunglasses. And this, you know, and the talk so far was about uh, image recognition. And, but uh, other uh, very interesting things are happening uh, using deep learning. So deep learning plus the reinforcement learning. So um, we show some uh, videos. So this was research done by DeepMind. Uh, which was acquired by Google. So they are doing some, okay. And they, are, they developed an artificial intelligence to learn game, game playing, using a deep learning plus the reinforcement learning and at first, the, the AI plays uh, badly, but uh, gradually they are improving. Uh, and the uh, score is uh, input into the reinforcement learning as a, a reward. Uh, and the difference uh, between this uh, research and the older uh, research is they use um, features or variables obtained by image recognition as a, a to, to express state. So uh, we human do not have to give any you know uh, explicit variables to you know, describe the state. So that's why um, this AI system will, you know, make, you know, uh, tunnels here, and th this way uh, the AI can score uh, much. Okay. And because the the input of the um, this 
AI system is only image and score, the same algorithm can be applied to different games. So um, the same program is applied to the Space Invader game, and they, the, the AI learns to play, and they get uh, better. And in Atari games, uh, this is an uh, old uh, Atari games, but in, in uh, among 60, more than 60 Atari games, the AI plays better than human uh, in half of them. Okay, uh, then if we apply this technology to the real world application, what will happen? The uh, UC Berkeley uh, robotics team is doing this research. Uh, this robot uh, will you know, put this part to the, the, the body, but they, they, he, he doesn't know how to do. If this part is uh, uh, set to the uh, body correctly, the reward is we give him the reward. And the robot is doing, learning this by trial and errors. And the input of the system is image. So the situation is very same to the, you know, uh, uh, the area example, like, like of game frame. And uh, he learns to do many other things. Like um, uh, playing with uh, Lego blocks. He's closing the cap, but uh, he, you know, um, rotate reversely at first. Okay. And in Japan, we have uh, very similar research uh, from uh, preferred networks, uh, which uses deep reinforcement, uh, deep learning with uh, reinforcement learning. And the situation is like this. Uh, in, in this racing circuit, the uh, AI will learn to drive. So image is given to the uh, car, and they learn to uh, manipulate a handle, brake, and axle. The revert is set as, you know, if the car moves forward, uh, then uh, he gets reward. And if he bumps into world or other car, the reward is reduced. Okay, uh, at first, uh, this car does not move cannot move at all. But after a while, uh, he learns to move forward, but he cannot um, um, move correctly. But finally, uh, he drives very, you know, very good, like a uh, human uh, laser at this you know, hairpin corner. The, the, yeah, 
keys right away. It's really good. And okay, and the technology is uh, applied to the uh, real world. This uh, small car, mini car. And at first, the the cars cannot uh, drive well, so they they bump each other sometimes. But uh, after one hour training, uh, they are moving very well. And this was uh, done by applying deep learning with uh, re reinforcement learning. So human do not write many rules to drive. They only learn driving by trial and errors. But uh, you know, um, of course, human can do this, but also the uh, the animals can do this. So in this task, um, we we don't need you know higher level intelligence like language or uh, you know you know symbol manipulation. So it is not surprising, but the conventional technology cannot do this because the, the, the feature uh, extraction was uh, impossible. Okay, um, so um, uh, there is um, uh, Maravik's paradox uh, that, that is uh, contrary to tra traditional assumption, a high level reasoning required very little computation but low level sensor motor scale require enormous computation, computational resources. So um, for many years, it was very difficult for computers to recognize image or uh, acquire skills, but things had changed, changed in these uh, three years. So image recognition is now possible, and learning uh, sensory motor skills becomes possible. So in the end, extracting features from vast amount of information is the most difficult part of computation, uh, requiring an uh, enormous amount of comp computa computing uh, resources. Now it is feasible to have computation and uh, extract features. Uh, combined with the past studies, AI research is expected to progress very rapidly in the next five, ten years. So the uh, future development of deep learning is like this, uh, from recognition uh, to action and then to language. So uh, now we have uh, image recognition, but many researchers are doing uh, uh, multimodal uh, recognition. And the research of robotics now be, uh, begin now beginning, but the interaction uh, of the robotics and environment is the uh, next challenge. And then we, we will have some uh, technology to do symbol grounding, and then we can get uh, uh, we can do knowledge acquisition through language. And uh, we will have, uh, uh, there will be uh, a large impact to industry and society uh, through the development of the technology. Okay. And uh, because um, we, we have many keywords related to AI, I you know, coined sometimes ch child AI and adult AI because for many years uh, the AI was very bad at things uh, which uh, it children can do, like image recognition and uh, acquiring skills. But now it is possible. Um, 
maybe in you know, 10 years, uh, the, the AI will recognize uh, language, which means that the AI can transform uh, the sentence into uh, you know, images and images to uh, sentence. So the uh, real you know, uh, language understanding will be possible. So that kind of uh, uh, sequence of research is called uh, child AI. And uh, adult AI is something uh, applied to big data or uh, and uh, for some domains like uh, medic medical domains, education, uh, or in the financial domains, we cannot use uh, uh, data so, uh, so far, but currently e e we can use data. So we apply, uh, sorry, we apply the uh, existing AI technology to the uh, newly, newly obtained data, we can, uh, you know, make new services or a new product. That is called uh, adult AI. So these two, two uh, things are different. And the current, you know, current um, driverless car is using adult AI. But the uh, example uh, I show earlier was uh, you know, child AI. So at some stage, the child AI should, uh, you know, overpass the adult AI for this uh, driverless car uh, domain. And I think that Toyota is uh, doing this kind of thing. Okay, um, applying the child AI, uh, some domains such as agriculture, construction, food processing, we have huge impact because they are uh, dealing with the natural things. And to deal with the natural things, uh, the recognition is crucial. If we don't have uh, image recognition, we cannot you know, cut fruit. We cannot you know, um, uh, get fruit from tree. But these things will be automated in near futures, because we, because we have uh, already technologies for this. So the point, the essence of the change is in image, video recognition, uh, numerous tasks, tasks are being done by humans only because image, video recognition is impossible for computers. And cost will be reduced for example, for monitoring tasks, less than 1% of the uh, current cost uh, is you know, required. And many, many business will suddenly be, be possible. For action proficiency, uh, we believe that the machine can do only machine-like behaviors and robots can play only robots-like actions. The situation will change. So uh, robots, uh, will learn and machines will uh, be you know more proficient and uh, plant soil uh, the agriculture or you know construction and uh, food processing this area will be changed completely in the near future okay in in the end maybe our life will use robotics and AI uh, very extensively and daily, our daily lives will be supported by robots and you know, AIs, and our works are you know, helped by AIs. But to, to this stage, uh, I think there are two ways for this. So informational, uh, inform informational path and also physical path. And I think the Japanese companies are very good at you know, physical tasks because uh, the, we have very strong uh, car companies, construction companies, agricultural companies, uh, manufacturing robots companies. So maybe uh, to develop uh, AI or robot, uh, robots for physical tasks is, 
is a key for the uh, you know, Japanese uh, industry. Okay. Okay, this is uh, my last slide uh, about revival of manufacturing in Japan uh, by AI. We have many problems, problems in Japan, uh, the aging population and low birth rate. And we have a very strong need for uh, physical labors. For example, a work, workforce shortage for agriculture, construction, logistics, elderly care, decommissioning of nuclear reactors, and success of skilled labors. So uh, these are the uh, needs for physical labors. But the child AI is a good fit to this problem. Uh, child AI can solve this problem, and uh, it is a good fit to the manufactu manufacturing. And uh, we have many good uh, environmental factors. Uh, we have many AI researchers in Japan. Uh, we have understanding of AI through different generations. And there is no language barrier for the technology because the algorithms and uh, uh, physical pro products uh, matter. So maybe it, it is a, our next action is very important. Um, I uh, studied an educational pro pro uh, program of deep learning in University of Tokyo from uh, this month. And many uh, Japanese uh, companies are uh, funding uh, for this. And because we have various opportunity for uh, each industry, we must find and ex exploit them. And uh, I think in Lacten, we have maybe many image data, and that can be used uh, using deep learning technology somehow. And also, uh, the, the value chain, supply chain will change in the near future. Uh, in domains like uh, uh, you know agri agriculture, food processing, maybe uh, we have some opportunities for uh, for that. And lastly, we we should uh, portray the bright pictures of a future society using AI and robotics. Okay, and maybe uh, yeah, it's our. Way to do. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Matsuo.